everyone, I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Samvia. Today what we'd love to share with you is a fresh technique on how to add face framing. So we've shown you a couple other techniques and what you can do is you can go to our YouTube page, do some searching around, and you're gonna find other techniques for this as well. But what we wanna do as a company is we wanna offer you as much value as possible. And the way that we do that is giving you options because not every technique is gonna be the right thing for every client. So this is just a fresh idea and we'll talk a little bit about who it's gonna fit best. Let's get into the sectioning. So to section Shayna's hair here, we're gonna find that high point of the head. It's that upper surface of the mountain. Easy way to do that, take your comb just horizontal with the floor, bring it down. Where it touches the head first is gonna be the highest point. Make sure your client's in natural head position when you do this. We're gonna find that high point and we're going to connect our point where the hair becomes weak behind the ear. So if I go to just the top of the ear, what happens is this is the area where density actually changes. So if I come to the top of the ear, I actually have this area of the hair that isn't going to be cut inside of that area. So coming from just behind the ear here and following this hairline is gonna make sure that we get everything that we want into the side of the haircut. So to isolate this, I'm gonna dry, grab one of our dry cutting clips. What's cool about these clips is they have a little rubber piece in there that you can see that helps to just hold the hair nicely between and it holds the hair flat together so it's not gonna add a crease to the dry hair. And it holds a lot of hair and it holds it extremely well. So we're gonna mirror that same parting on this other side now. I'm gonna find that point just behind the ear, place a finger there, place another finger here on the tooth of my comb and just connect the dots. And that gives me a nice clean parting. Grab one more dry cutting clip and pull that out of the way. So that isolates our front. To start this, we're going to now part off the upper surface of the head. And what that is, is anything that lives above the round of the curvature of the head. Um, her part's almost right on it but I'm just actually gonna slice a little bit off of there. I'm gonna have you tilt your head down just a little bit. And that's gonna be our first parting there. From that parting, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the seven inch dry cutting shear from our signature series, because we have a lot of dry hair to handle here, and these shears have the strength in the blade to be able to hold onto this hair and not push it. Actually, I'm gonna have you come back to natural head position. My over direction is everything forward to a square line in the front. So I'm over directing to this almost imaginary wall in front of her face. My elevation is 90 degrees horizontal, which means horizontal and flat with the floor. Now, as far as length goes, I just need to kind of determine where my shortest point is gonna fall. I'd actually like it to fall kind of around jawline. So I just need to kind of picture, okay, if I cut that length, where is it going to fall to? And if you need to, go ahead and pull a little piece out and measure it there for yourself. I feel pretty comfortable with that length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a V shape into this. We want our longest points on the outside and our shortest point on the inside there. And you can see with that seven inch dry cutting shear, it makes pretty quick work of all that hair. It's a lot of hair, because she has fairly thick hair. It's on the medium side, but definitely is shying towards the thick side. And when it's dry like this, it tends to push out of the shear. So the seven inch dry cutting shear is excellent for this. So what you can see will happen from that point is even that, I start to get my, my shape built in. Now how do I tie that into the sides? I'm gonna take my parting down the center. And by the way, I am coming from the center because she does move her part. It doesn't always come off this side part. If it was always based off that side part, I would shift my center point to that, to that place so that it started more evenly. So with this side now, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to bring the side in. The elevation is staying the same, 90 degrees horizontal. And again, the over direction is straight forward. I'm going to find my shortest point from my previously cut section, and then I'm going to find my longest point on the perimeter here. So I know if I save this piece right here, I'm not going to cut away the perimeter. And I'm going to come in and just connect the two. The other nice thing too is she does have a little heat damage around the front, and this is going to get rid of all that, and it's going to feel really fresh and really healthy. So let's step to this side so we can work our section on this side. Again, elevation is 90 degrees horizontal. And that over direction is straight forward towards the mirror. My finger angle is straight vertical as well. And then once I find my section, I stop my pink or the tip of my fingers at the length that I want and I rotate that knuckle out until I find the length at the perimeter and just cut that off. As long as my perimeter lengths were balanced, now I will have balance on either side because I had a guide from the perimeter and the center that I set in that first section. So let's take these clips out. We'll just give it a little shake See how this all came out? Ooh, I like this. This is fresh for you, love. And it just happens to be your birthday today, so this is a great birthday haircut. And like I said, the, the other benefit of that is it really cut away a lot of that damaged hair that she had around the front from excessive tool heat, which I already gave her a talking to. She knows now to turn her iron down. We don't need to be baking our hair with 450 degree irons. So again, just to recap the technique, we're going to start here at the high point, draw a line to just behind the ear where the hair becomes weaker and the hairline drops. Do that on both sides. Our next section is at the top of the round of the head, above that parietal ridge area, and making sure that we're just getting that upper surface. That section is all over-directed straight forward to a wall, and elevation is horizontal, 90 degrees horizontal, flat with the floor. We're cutting that V shape in. Make sure you give yourself a visual cue of where that first length is going to uh, sit on the face, and it's something that you, where you want it to hit. We cut that V shape in, then we bring the sides down. Elevation again is 90 degrees horizontal and straight forward is our over, our over direction. And we connect the short, that longest point of our V shape in the top out to the lengths in the perimeter. It's actually a pretty simple technique. And I think if you watch this a few times, it'll be something that you can have ownership over. What this is great for is these medium to even thicker heads of hair because you do have a lot of layer and a lot of lightness through this. So this is going to be great for those girls that need that movement. We hope you enjoyed the technique and if you have any questions, please add your comments in the box just below the screen and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers.